In today's world, misinformation is not only a common occurrence, but an expected one. Turning on any major news network greets you with the clearly biased information of whatever host you prefer, likely painting your opinions and the opinions of the host as the correct opinion in the situation at hand. It's not even uncommon for our elected representatives to do the exact same thing. They will likely paint their political adversaries as radical or dangerous to make themselves seem like the voice of reason in an unreasonable world. Yet, is the world actually so unreasonable? The truth is, I have no idea. Honestly, I've lived a very simple and short life in comparison to those around me. I often look to my peers for guidance and find myself constantly shaping and reshaping the opinions I call original. I also tend to look at unlikely media sources like video games, television, and movies. Now, before you completely tune me out, hear this. I know you do this too. Whether you know it or not, the entertainment you consume is by and large an influence on how you go about your day-to-day -day life. Think about the jokes you make, the way you carry yourself, maybe even what your interests are right now. Have they been influenced by a character from media? Did they originate as a source that you later looked into? Likely, yes. And this is not only expected, but it's also completely normal. These media sources have stories to tell, and they tell them in such a way that we can digest difficult topics like war, inequality, or some other hardship without thinking about it in the same way that we would in the real world. These stories and entertainment sources often take on messages that allow for a new perspective, mostly due to the fact you may have never considered them due to how difficult and draining they are to think about, or because you are so entrenched in your own personal beliefs. I mean, take me for example. My opinions and beliefs have changed dramatically thanks to critically examining these entertainment sources. One of these sources that shaped me early in my life was called Fallout New Vegas. Now, the context of this game doesn't really matter, so just know that this is a type of game where you can place yourself alongside the fictional characters and pretend like you are part of the story. This genre being called role-playing, seeing as you play the role of the main character. Now, the two biggest themes in this game are greed and game rigging. Now, greed drives the events of the game. Everyone wants what they don't have, be it money, land, food, so long as the other doesn't get any and none of those resources fall into the hands of the enemy. Even when that enemy wants to provide for the common individual. On the one hand, you can gather those resources and create a long-lasting society of peace and tranquility, but attempting to do so will be met with pushback from those who seek to exploit or harm by using the system. On the other hand, you can take those resources and hoard them for yourself, but you risk becoming a tyrant. In addition to the theme of greed, there's the theme of game rigging. Now, game rigging asks the fundamental question, who is really in control? Is it really your game to play? Can you even make a difference? That question, even after I've completed the game in mul multiple times, is never answered the exact same. While you can eliminate some people who would attempt to manipulate the system, you'll never be rid of those who want to exploit and harm for their own sadistic gain. So what do you do? Now, you may be asking me, if the game is unwinnable, and no matter what you do, the outcome is the same, why try? Why play? My answer, to do better. But what does better even mean? To some, it means a world of personal fulfillment and comfortable lives and serene isolation. To others, it's a world united under a common purpose to lift one another up. In Fallout New Vegas and in wider life, the idea of a better world is a contentious issue. First, let's look to those who would build a world through democratic ideals and through capitalism. If you side with these individuals during your playthrough, you'll get a world full of individualism, self-respect, and equality for all. But you can also expect rampant political corruption from the wealthy, the inability for yourself to gather personal wealth, and a lack of security and stability due to the inability for the state to rapidly mobilize against threats both internal and external. Does that sound like any real world nation we have today? Now, idealism is good. A world based on rising through the political system by your own skills, the ability to have a better life for the next generation, 
and the ability to find self-fulfillment in all leisurely pursuits sounds wonderful. But sacrifices are going to be necessary for this. And this is where the authoritarian side comes in during your playthrough of Fallout New Vegas. They enter a tempting alternative. Stability through force. Political power if you have the strength to take it. And wealth beyond your imagination if only you give up your personal autonomy to the will of the Caesar. Now, as Americans, it is our instinct to shun and completely ignore the ideas of authoritarianism. Yet this is a dangerous thing for us to do. Clearly, individuals throughout history, and even into our modern day, have a reason for believing in these ideals. Security for freedom, the ability to gain power by taking it from those who would be unworthy, and the ability to find self-fulfillment if you remove your autonomy. Maybe what you want is to overcome something, something deep inside that drives us all, fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of failure, and fear of being forgotten. Humans will do outright and dangerous, deplorable acts to overcome this. And all of this fear is promised to be removed if you give in to these extreme ideals and you give in entirely to them, paying their prices. However, these prices are far too steep and the implications are far too dangerous for those around you to fully entertain these ideas. This example holds a lot of weight in the real world and should be critically examined. What prices are we willing to pay for what we want? See, the hidden price with authoritarians is they always have a fine print. While you think you're paying in your strength and autonomy, you truly pay in the suffering of others. And in the end, you are conned into never being able to reach your full success due to the fact that you've invested into the success of the system. Now, this isn't to say that the democratic and egalitarian systems are going to be perfect either. Their price comes at the cost of those who are excluded from the foundations of their systems. In other words, if the game was rigged from the start, who is it rigged against? Taking these ideals into the real world, outside of the game, it is our responsibility as independent individuals to not only remain educated and informed, but to aid others in rising to that level as well. In the real world, ignorance is no longer a luxury we can afford. We cannot permit those who seek to rewrite the rules of the game we call life against those who gave them the power, the privilege to do so. To question, to critique, to demand a better life, that is not only your right, it is your duty as a sovereign individual. I learned this lesson from a video game because the real world game makers don't want you to know that their game is becoming rigged. Because the truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Thank you.